Shabbat Shalom. I'm Robert Barr, and you are? Simi Barr. And we are delighted to be sharing this Shabbat service with you. We're going to begin with the reading, explain a little bit about OJC, candlelighting, and a special conversation. Six days we speak, tonight we listen. Six days we build, tonight we rest. Six days we take care of others, tonight we nurture ourselves. Six days we work to change our world, tonight we are renewed by what is eternal. Six days we plan for the future, tonight we are enveloped in the present. Six days we eat and drink in haste. Tonight, tonight we savor the taste of bread and wine and feel the bond of the world that feeds us. Six days we teach, tonight we learn. Six days we hear the clamor, tonight we listen for clarity. Six days we struggle to expand our influence, tonight we are dissolved in a greater influence. Six days we focus on our vision, on the task at hand, tonight we look beyond what we can see. May each of us find our Sabbath peace. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. And again, I'm Robert Barr, and this is Simi Barr, and we are thrilled to be sharing this Shabbat service with you. Those of you who've joined us before know that our JewishCommunity.org is a community that has a bold, dynamic voice, a voice that speaks about what it means to be a modern Jew, a Jew who, who embraces modernity, science, modern philosophy, theology, and that more than just talking about it, we've, we've translated those ideas and incorporated it into our liturgy. That's what really makes us most unique. When people find us and they say, wow, your services don't sound like anything I've heard before, it's because we've taken ideas that have been around in Reconstructionist Judaism and Reform Judaism and Zionist thinking and, and polydoxy, which is a form of Judaism that a faculty member of mine developed, and Sherman Wine did a form of Judaism called humanism. All these ideas were rolled together and we created a, a, a dynamic liturgy that was bold, where we say what we mean and mean what we say, recognizing that as 21st century Jews, our understanding of the universe is different than anything our ancestors ever could have conceived of. And this community of people came, gave, gave, was given birth to, if you will, by Congregation Beth Adam, where I'm the founding rabbi. We're about to celebrate our 36 years. And then through technology, through streaming services, we create a community together. I have a sense there are people probably even in London tonight, joining us and people from other parts of the world uh, and parts of America. And I, we know that some people watch live at 6 o'clock. You'll be chatting in. And some people watch in our archives, and you can leave a message. That's the be beauty of technology and the beauty of what we're willing to do. We're willing to take all these different things and combine it together to create this special moment, this Shabbat. So we're glad you're here, whether you're watching in real time or watching in archives. We're going to continue with a candle lighting and then our conversation. On Shabbat, we light the candles. Candles bring forth light, illuminating the darkness. Candles offer us warmth, providing comfort. Candles awaken us as we reach for possibilities. As we light these candles, let us use their light to stretch beyond ourselves, touching others, bettering our world. Baruch or ba'olam, blessed is the light within the world. Baruch or ba'adam, blessed is the light within each person. Baruch or ba'shabbat, blessed is the light of the Sabbath. So, Robert Barr and Simi Barr, and for those of you who haven't figured it out yet, uh, I'm related to Simi. <laughs> Simi is my son, uh, uh, and he's in Cincinnati. And I, I asked him if he'd if he'd do this for a variety of reasons tonight. I thought it was a great opportunity. One, we are here at Congregation Beth Adam. We're working to reach out to the students who've been part of our community over the years. We've had a lot of different students been part of our community, and uh, we're looking to create a, a web. We know that many of those people live all over. Simi lives out in Southern California, and I thought this was a great opportunity, and I'm hoping that as we do this more, as we're reaching out to more of our students around the country, as that when they're in town, they can come and talk to us. We're going to talk about where they are, where they were then, and where they are now. So I was going to ask uh, Sam for some, uh, if he'll, Sam, who's behind the computer, is to uh, sort of pull up that picture of Simi when he was in Bar Mitzvah.
Mitzvah? Yeah, of course. March 26th. Was it? Right? Yeah, I think so. Wow. What was it? Do you remember? So at Beth Adam, our kids not only do a Torah portion, they write a paper on a particular topic. Mm -hmm. Do you recall your topic? Uh, my topic was uh, a lady we met named Jean Osran. Oh, can you talk a little about that? That was really just, you remember? Well, uh, she was a lady uh, from the Netherlands. Right. Um, friend of my dad's that I was lucky enough to meet. And uh, during World War II and the Holocaust, she worked to save the lives of a lot of, of Jews and uh, smuggled people out. And she was working as a nanny at the time and uh, saved a lot of people, specifically kids, I think. Right. And you, so wait a second. I want to just to let everyone know. I, we didn't talk about this since... The, oh, the, yeah. Right, right, like yeah. it didn't prompt you right before this and say, you remember it, right? Mm -hmm. So that was, and you're right. Yeah, that's, that was, that's what you remember. Yeah. And you had that. You had the opportunity, and, and your sister too, to meet Jean twice. We mm -hmm. saw it when you were little, when you yeah. were about right before your bar mitzvah, mm -hmm. um, and then a couple years later, we were back in the Netherlands, yeah. and, and and I remember being, and you were at that point, you were sort of a bigger guy. At mm -hmm. the beginning, you were little. In fact, she she can because she was going blind, mm -hmm. and when she hugged you the, that time, she thought yeah, she thought we switched. switched. Yeah, she thought I was you. Right. So it's interesting. So. It, and for those of you who don't know about Beth Adam's Bar and Bat Mitzvah program, one of the things that we do is we, we have the kids write these papers because we want them to connect. And, and what's really nice is I actually forgot that you wrote about Sean. Mm -hmm. I totally forgot. And that, that you remember well, that. I, yeah, it was at Heroes because I, I opened talking about Moses, Mo I think. Right? Oh, right. You yeah. talked, that's right. You talked about, oh, good. So, wow, mm -hmm. so you had a whole. Th so it did yeah. have an impression. Every, yeah. You told me you didn't. <laughs> You learned how to tie a tie then, and you learned about um, about Jean, which was a very powerful story. If 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 you're interested more about the the, the woman Simi's talking about, we actually have uh, material on, about Jean on ourjewishcommunity.org. If you go to ourjewishcommunity.org and go into the search, type in uh, Hall, uh, Jean Oseren, J E A N N E. Just type that in; it should pull it up. And uh, there's actually the I mean, some materials. Uh, about her, some photographs, I believe, uh, the talk I was invited to speak at that. But that's really wonderful because it's really neat for me. It's really as, as not just as your dad, but as the rabbi of the congregation, that that had an impression because that was uh, about yeah. 13 years ago. Just about. Uh, 12 yeah, years ago. Well, it's amazing when you give someone the choice, something to research, something to write about. You know, it sticks in their mind a lot more. I don't remember the the Torah portion I was assigned to read, but I remember the, Torah. the paper mm -hmm. that I chose to write about. So that's cool. Yeah. That's very exciting. That's very exciting. So Simi, then you finished Beth Adam, part of the program, graduated college, and now you're living in Southern California, working and and what I and you're working with kids. Yeah. Right? And, and adults. And adults. Lots of kids, yeah. And what kind of work are you doing? Give, give, let... So I work at uh, a, um outdoor education facility, basically. So students will come with like a fifth or sixth grade class. Uh, so 100, 150 kids will come. And we'll do environmental education for the weekend. Outdoor recreation, climbing, canoeing, hiking. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, outdoor education, environmental education, um, all sorts of stuff, you know, having fun, getting dirty, looking for bugs, all that sort of stuff. <laughs> Look, oh, you do some night stuff too, right? You do some yeah, astronomy? Yeah. yeah, astronomy, night hikes, mm -hmm. um, all sorts of fun stuff. A few uh, trying to integrate the next generation science standards, um, more What's engineering that? concepts and things like that. So a few states have... Um, accepted what's known as the next generation science standards which is kind of the next step from uh, common core you might have heard a lot of controversy recently um so next generation science standards it's kind of you can think of it as a triangle there are three sort of uh parts to it there's the core ideas which are kind of like the common core those facts you need to know you know you need to know the earth goes around the sun not the other way around um that's that's some misconception flying around on, you know, the internet and whatnot. <laughs> um, so you've got that side. Then you've got uh, engineering principles, um, principles that scientists and engineers use in the classroom, um, or I'm sorry, in their in their disciplines, whether it's in the lab or what it mm -hmm. may be. 
Um, so that's sort of the scientific method. Um, that's sort of how we learned it. Right. Um, but that's more testing, experimentation. And then the third side of the triangle is um, more of the mathematics side of it. Really? Uh, calculations, things like that. Yeah. So trying to... Um, it's the next generation of science standards we're trying to put together all these concepts um, so hopefully students are a little more better prepared for uh, life life outside of school and um, and it's all trying it's, it's, to mm -hmm. really focus on stem careers science technology engineering mathematics mm -hmm. um, trying to get students ready for that because as we all know you know um, some of those jobs in the United States getting harder to get so uh, trying to make sure our students are as prepared as they can mm -hmm. be in, in a competitive uh, environment, yeah. That's interesting. So, yeah. And also, it's, it's also nature-based, too. You're outside in nature, right. you're up in the mountains, yes. you do hikes with them. Mm -hmm. What do you, how does that work, and how does that speak to this whole it's, experience? It's uh, cool, it's very cool. Um, getting kids outside, uh, getting them into nature, it's something a lot of kids, especially in Southern California, don't have the opportunity to do anymore. You know, they might not be allowed to walk outside their front gate um, at night because a lot of those neighborhoods can be dangerous where they're coming from. Um, light pollution in the cities means they can't really even see the stars. So to come up uh, to the mountains for a couple days and a couple nights and get outside and look at the stars and see see what it's like on a clear night. Um, you really see kids get perspective, open up their minds, get more curious just during those few days at camp. Really? Yeah, it's cool stuff. Um, yeah, and I remember I was thinking about um, this beforehand, the first time I really was impacted by a starry night, and it was actually the first time I was in Israel um, on a birthright trip. I remember being out in the desert, and we took uh, sort of a midnight, a midnight stroll and uh, all laid out on the sand dunes at night, and yeah, it was pretty amazing seeing the seeing the stars like that for the first time. Right. Well, that's interesting. That's right, because you were—I guess you were in high school when you did that trip. Yep. That was yeah. It was, it was birthright. It was before birthright, actually. It was, it was, okay. It was, it was, yeah. it was you because it was a high school trip. Right. I, don't I was, know what they I was it. in tenth grade. I don't know. I yeah. Thought, yeah. But it was interesting that that made an impact on you, mm -hmm. and that, and it, and you remember it. That you remember seeing that, and and what's so interesting is we were talking a little bit before. Also, you said a lot of these kids. They are so video game oriented that they don't play either, or distraction. Yeah. The idea you're talking, we're talking about. Yeah. So um, a lot of the kids, you know, they come through. They're not used to being outside. Like I said, you know, um, the the screen, the draw of the screen is huge these days, especially with you know our youth. <laughs> and they got iPads. They got. Do they come iPhones. up with that? Do they come up? Oh no! That's what's great about camp is we don't allow technology you don't need it the wi-fi is terrible anyways <laughs> yeah, so yeah, that we know <laughs> yeah so they come up without any of that stuff they might have a book they might have you know their notebook mm -hmm. and it's just them and their thoughts and you know their friends for a couple days so getting away from that screen is huge you see their um sometimes their attention spans seem really short but it's because they're so used to having these constant stimuli um so they sort of adapt when they're up at camp because there's a different kind of stimuli. You know, you're not playing a game, you're not popping balloons or anything like that. But there's all these cool things out you can see and you can check out and you can ask questions mm -hmm. about. Um, so yeah, to you know, you get out there and you encourage, you know, questions and you encourage curiosity and you really see these kids sort of step away from from their technology-driven lives mm -hmm. for a minute. That's cool. That's yeah. really interesting. So curiosity and questioning, did you, did you, is that, do you relate that at all to Beth and Dom? And oh, you know? yeah. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That was one of my absolute favorite things about Beth and Dom was um, always being taught to question things, always uh, really delving into issues um, and, and asking hard questions, whether whether that in nature that might just be what kind of tree is that? What's that bird doing? Um, but here, you know, we were always taught to ask questions, you know, what sort of things are moral, what's ethical, um, really, really diving into mm -hmm. some stuff. So I, I really, I really enjoyed. That's good. Cool. Yeah. Okay. And, and just for those of you who have not 
taking the tour of Beth Adam. You can go on, on the website that we have a video. You know, our, our stained glass windows are the Big Bang and, mm -hmm. and nature. So and you had your bar mitzvahs underneath the Big Bang yeah. and nature, which is really nice. And this year for, for Rosh Hashanah, we're bringing a planetarium in for the kids. Wow. We did that. We did that a couple of years ago. Nice. So they put it in the library. Yeah. And the and our library is perfectly shaped. It fills up the entire mm -hmm. library. And we talk about because you know Russia shows about the changing the seasons and the changing the years. So we do mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. So we're bringing that in. So, which is very exciting. So we're try. We're, so the things that Simi are do, is doing outside in California, um, with kids, we're trying to bring it in here too. Both the questioning, the science is really important because at Beth Adam and at ourjewishcommunity.org, science is core to our understanding. Our theology has to be uh, consistent with what we know about science and what we can learn. They can't be in conflict. We have to understand the issues of the laws of nature and appreciation also for a place in the universe. I had the fortune, good fortune, I was out in California uh, with Simi in February. It was February when we, mm -hmm. we went out to Joshua Tree and you, we sat outside and you gave me a tour of the night sky. And you know, we were looking at all that, and we were talking about it, and you were, and you begin to get the sense of, of, of wonder and, and appreciation for the for the grandeur of the universe and, and and nature itself, which we don't get when you're living in a city. Oh, absolutely, yeah. And I was going to say one of the things for and for those of you who sort of if you found out if you looked at our Facebook page, uh, there's a picture of Simi and I. Uh, uh, Simi and me, we were up in the, we were hiking up the trails in the San Jacinto mountain range. We were walking around. You were, did I do pretty good? Did yeah. I not, with, yeah, it was great. Good hike. Good yeah. hike. <laughs> and and it's interesting because I was looking at this. There's I, I found an article um, that uh, uh, about hiking. Research shows that spending time out of doors increases attention spans and creative and creative problem solving skills by as much as fifty percent. There was work at Stanford University uh, Graduate School of Education that walking gets the creative juices flowing far more than sitting. And then it talks about just the you know the, the health benefits of hiking itself. Mm -hmm. That hiking is a is a healthy uh, endeavor. It's 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 not only relaxing, lowering cholesterol, but it's 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 physically demanding without being physically. If you're just doing trail walking, it, it's 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 not hard on your joints. Mm -hmm. It could be it's relatively safe if you're paying attention to where you're going, um, watching that, tripping over things, and doing that. And it's interesting as we were walking, you were pointing things out that I didn't would not have seen without you. There were those holes in the in the in the yeah. What in the bedrock, so the bedrock mortars that were uh, carved out by Native Americans, yeah. So you know, you saw them, you talked about them, we looked, we, yeah. walked, we walked by gold mines, we walked by, there's a whole, up in those mountains there had been a big gold, uh, uh, silver gold. Gold rush, gold yeah. Rush. And, and uh, you know, it was, that part of it, it wasn't really as good as the rest of the country, mm -hmm. and some people were, were swindled and scammed, but it was a pretty interesting conversation. And you were pointing that out, and then one some point you, you picked up a, a, you grabbed some, uh, uh, leaves off a, a bush. I don't remember what you did. And you said, hey, this is what this is for, and this is what that. And I wouldn't have seen it. To me, they were all a bunch of green bushes. Mm -hmm. And what was also interesting, too, and this was fascinating to me, um, my brother and sister-in-law and I live not too far from, from where Simi lives, and all of you talk about the trails by, like, trees, like the perfect pinion. You go, mm -hmm. oh, you know where the perfect pinion? Make a right at the perfect pinion. I'm walking through the forest, and it Looks like a forest to me, but you all talk about this pinion tree. And you go this way, or if you go to the, the Jack Shack or the Magic Apple Tree, or the I mean, everyone seems to know these places that are pretty far away, and there's there's no street signs. No, <laughs> no, it's a word of mouth trail sort of thing. So asking questions, detail oriented. Um, you know, it's all in the minds of these people because if you're out on you know a trail ride um, on horseback, you really need to know where you are because people get lost up there um yeah and yeah so so what so what is advice some advice that people if they're going out for a hike they should always do there are a lot of things you should do make sure someone knows where you are shouldn't be hiking out alone um probably if you're in a place you don't know water 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 that's a big one especially um got a huge heat wave in the united states right now Mm -hmm. I think climate six, change, maybe sixty million people are affected by it. Did you you said something about heat to me yesterday too? When we were talking about heat tornadoes, what'd you call it? Yeah, yeah, heat's this real big silent killer uh, 
behind flooding in the United States, uh, more people are killed by heat than anything else. I just saw on the news today, unfortunately, uh, more children have been killed uh, locked in cars or getting stuck in cars um, just this summer than all of last summer put together. And we're just scratching wow. the surface, obviously. Wow, wow, wow. So, so water, water, water. Um, but in response to climate change, um, I, I saw a congressman bring a snowball onto the floor of Congress, and that seemed like pretty um, a pretty rock-solid argument to me for <laughs> why climate change is clearly a hoax. Um, so <laughs> <You're being facetious. laughs> That's why you're teaching science, because you yeah. want kids to understand this is stuff is real. I mean, so, Absolutely. Yeah. So that that's that this is why this is why this uh, what you call it the, the triangle what what you call it uh, next generation science that kids mm -hmm. understand science that they know how to ask questions think about it um so let people know where you're going if you don't, go with somebody else who knows where mm -hmm. they're going water 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 yep. anything else having a map compass that's a good idea knowing how to orient yourself um, mm -hmm. pretty important in the back country too yeah, yeah yeah well you also so the other thing that people should know you're a wilderness emt it's, yes yeah, so uh, in addition to, to working out out of doors, yeah, I'm a wilderness EMT, um, which means I'm an EMT just like those that ride around in ambulances, and I'm also a wilderness first responder, which is a super cool certification um, that honestly was just a lot of, lot of fun getting and uh, learned a ton along the way. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so just about being safe um, outdoors. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And good. Any uh, and anything else you want to share? Are there questions? I there, there is a few. There are people. Not questions as much as comments. Okay, 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 okay. It is no surprise. Well, well we can't hear. We're not gonna be able to hear. But we're okay. We'll, t we'll do the comments afterwards. So, so uh, uh, my wife, Simi's mom, is standing, sitting, is behind the, is behind the camera. <laughs> yeah. So taking that note, it's a proud mom it's writing that shit. Family it's affair, a full family yeah. event, and I think maybe uh, our your sister's online. Yeah. So, so it's pretty cool, which is fun. But this is so. This is the interesting piece of this. And you know, Simi watches the high holidays on occasion. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, luckily, they're only occasional. <laughs> luckily, they're only occasionally. <laughs> but it's nice because you know he's in some ways Simi is is prototypical in the sense that you know he graduated, he went to college in in Ohio, took a job, lives in California, happens to live way up and lives up in the mountains. And really, if you if there wasn't streaming services. For those few times a year you want to go, you couldn't. It would be a real schlep to go somewhere. Oh yeah, and nowhere that uh, I think I'd agree with ideologically. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, having OJC is fantastic, and growing up in Beth Adam was was really special. And I think I wouldn't um, have nearly the sort of Jewish identity I do um, if if I grew up or attended anywhere else. Yeah. Well, cool. I appreciate you doing this. This is this sort of not something that you typically do. No. Uh, it's great. Cool. So we're going, so I appreciate it. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll look at your comments afterwards. And as I said, too, that if there are other alums of Beth that are um, uh, on, we're going to try to do this. We're going to try to connect. If you're in town, I want to do this. I think it's really important to make uh, these connections and to remember them and to affirm that we're part of this great community. So thanks for doing this. Yeah, it's nice thanks. to have you home. I know mom's happy that you're home. Mm -hmm. um, uh, yeah. So, um, so great. So we're going to pause now and we're going to turn this in another direction. Um, this has uh, clearly been a, a horrific week in America. Uh, the, the murder of 49 innocent people uh, in Orlando, Florida at the, uh, at, at, at Pulse. Uh, a gay club, an attack on the LGBT community, uh, s trying to understand if the, sh the shooter was a, it was terrorism. It's a very complicated situation, and and tonight isn't about sort of the politics and trying to dissect all of that. It really is pausing to think about the fact that uh, people went out for a, a, a night of fun, uh, to be with friends, to affirm identity, to be connected, and that someone was able to get a weapon to far too easily in our country, a, a weapon that is designed to kill lots and lots of people and killed 49 people and injured about, wounded about 50 some other. It really is horrific, worse uh, shooting in our country, mass killing. And it's time that we as a country do something. But tonight it's time for us to pause and to think and to remember. The cycle of life unfolds just as we rejoice a new life, we mourn its final ending. 
the inevitable death of those whose lives have touched ours. Tonight, we join voices with others as we say aloud the words which help us recall those we've lost. We remember the moments we shared, the laughter and the tears, the beauty and the pain. Inevitably, as our lives intertwined, as we have touched one another, we have been influenced, changed, enriched by their presence. And so, as we mourn their loss, we celebrate their lives. Thus, the cycle continues, their lives forever marking the continued unfolding of our own. We pause at this time to remember those innocent people who were killed as a result of violence, terror, prejudice that mars our planet. Innocent people who went out for a night to enjoy and to be with their friends. Their lives ended in a hail of bullets. The lives of others transformed by the wounds that they now carry and families that have been torn apart. We remember them. And we think, too, about first responders, those who are willing to go into the face of danger, who are willing to rush in when others are rushing out, those who are willing to put their safety in harm's way to help us be free, to be protected. We think about them. We think about all our loved ones who no longer walk among us, those who influenced us, changed us, and helped us to become the people we are. Death cannot take that which is locked in our hearts. With our tears and our sorrow, we remember. With our courage and our strength, we do not forget. Acts of kindness, deeds of courage will remain. Beauty created, wisdom shared is not lost. With our tears and our sorrow, we remember. With our tears and our sorrow. We remember. Zeker tzadikli vracha. May the memory of good people bless our days. Let the Sabbath be a time for believing in what could be and seeing with new eyes. In this serious world, let, our take, let us take ourselves less seriously. In these harsh times, let us listen for a soothing word. While the world around us unfolds in an instance, let us judge each other a little more slowly. Let the Sabbath shine a light into a corner of ourselves where we hope is renewed. Let us remember a reason to be joyful, a way to be gentle. Let the Sabbath be a time for opening up. Let us find strength in our dreams and trust in our strength. Okay. And then we're going to do a hollow reading. Now, so Simi doesn't live, for those of you, if you, if you watched the service a couple weeks ago with my brother, Eric, uh, Uncle Rick, right? We didn't have Hala up on the hill, so we have a Hala here now. I'm sure people are going to comment on the Hala because it's never perfect. And I didn't get you. I didn't go out and buy you a fresh one. I'm sorry, and but it's it's still there. So it looks like a Hala. It's good. It's whatever bread you have. It's not so much about the nature of the bread as it is about the nature of the connections that we have with one another. So if you want to read that, in the Jewish tradition, we share the Hala as we celebrate the Shabbat. We are reminded that challah, a twisted loaf of bread, sustains and nurtures the life of our bodies. May the sharing of this challah sustain and nurture our hunger for knowledge and understanding of the world around us. May the sharing of this challah sustain and nurture our connection to those close by and those separated by distance and by time. May the sharing of the challah encourage us to reach out to those across our rooms, across our hallways, to those across our desks and across the miles. May the sharing of the hala strengthen and enrich our coming week. Baruch HaMalka Peinu, blessed is the work of our hands. Baruch HaZon HaAdam, blessed is the vision of our minds. Baruch Lechem HaAretz, blessed is the bread of the earth. And then over wine or juice, it's our custom to share wine or juice with family and friends and community. It reminds us that it's not enough for us to quench our physical thirst. We must nourish our spirit as well. As we celebrate Shabbat, this hollow wine, may we, as we celebrate, may this wine remind us to live our lives to the fullest and embrace the joys and pleasures that life offers. Bruchim chachayim ba'olam, blessed is the life within the world. Bruchim chachayim ba'adam, blessed is the life within us. So we say l'chaim, to life. And you say, why do I, so tonight, it's, I'm not going to give him wine today, he's my son, he's my little boy. <laughs> 
So I'm not encouraging him. This is not a test for him to be the rabbi after me. Uh-huh. Correct. It's not that <laughs> it's sort that... of family business. <laughs> so I just wanted to make sure everyone got it. I didn't know what anyone go, oh, this is okay, rabbi. <laughs> He's getting his son ready to take over. No, no, no. We're not doing that kind of stuff. Uh-uh, uh, it's not a family tradition. Neither of the kids want to go into this. But I'm glad you were here. It was really fun to do yeah, this Yeah, it was great. You. It's cool. So next week is, uh, uh, will be, uh, I, just, I just lost my note, is June 24th, and Aya and we were going to be doing services together. So at 6 o'clock, that'll be live. That'll be our last service uh, through the month of July. We're going to end June. We want to have live services in July or most of August. But you can check our Facebook page. Uh, about mid-August, we'll get... We'll start doing services again. I'm going to be out of the country, so I won't be able to do services. And you will have uh, you can look at services at archives during that. So we're really glad you're here. We're really glad that you're part of this community. It's so much fun to have a, a sense of that we're together, whether we're watching it right now and you're chatting and, and, and or you're going to chat later and see this experience. Having a bold scientific Judaism is incredibly important. It is about the future. It's about Jewish identity. It's about having a sense of of ideas that change the world and encourage us to be participants. We do have a question. Okay. What is Sami's educational background? The question was... You you went to (laughs) elementary school? Yes. What was my (laughs) educational background? I started in a Montessori kindergarten. (laughs) So we'll start way back. (laughs) And yeah, you're kindergarten, a- where I learned to um, pick sunflower seeds out of a sunflower <laughs> and make pancakes. Oh, good. Um, <laughs> and that's really where my education stopped. Um, so. No, no, no. no. <laughs> uh, truthfully, um, well, that was truthful. But uh, after that, you know, went through school, high school, um, and then went on to college where I studied biology and environmental science, um, got got bachelor's degree, um, which was great. And then I uh, got my certifications in wilderness uh, first responder and my EMT certification. I got that last summer um, at the College of the Siskiyous in Northern California, um, way up north by Oregon. Wow. It was yeah. pretty, wasn't it? Oh, yeah. It was great. Beautiful up there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Simi likes to, you like to hike, you like to sleep outside, you like to do those things. Mm -hmm. Cool. Great. Well, it's great to have you. I'm glad we answered the question. Um, I'm I'm actually shocked no one asked what Simi's name is. It's a nickname. It's a nickname. Huh? So now you got to answer it, I get. It's it's his nickname from his Hebrew name. Uh, from a Hebrew name. It's an old, an old family. It was very confusing when you were born. People couldn't figure out what your name was. Still sometimes is. is it? Yeah, yeah, people for a long time thought you were Timmy. And yet we have to always correct him. Simi, mm-hmm. it's his nickname. So if you see him and you yell his name, he's usually the only person who turns around, right? <laughs> yes. Pretty easy. So that's great. We're glad you're here. We're going to close with the final words. May we know blessings those who are near. And may we know blessings those who are far. And may the Sabbath bring its goodness to everyone soon, wherever they are. Shabbat Shalom.